Hi guys, Tiffany here. Welcome to my Quilting Live Insomniac Quilting Series, episode 26. <sighs> so get in your pajamas, join me, and let's make something. Or so, or just do whatever you want to do, like lay in bed and watch in your pajamas. <laughs> so, um, I was hoping that this other screen would be loaded. So while I look for this screen, don't forget to do head down that? there that way and subscribe to my channel like my videos and share them um yeah so okay other screen started yay it's working so um if you have looked in the description of this video today i'm going to use an eight piece fat quarter bundle set yes set it's called a set when it's in pieces and it's all like one line and some yardage so yardage Fat quarter bundle. And I don't know what I'm going to make. I was just going to chop up some fabric and sew it together. Because <laughs> it's an improv night and I feel like making something. I can't just sit in bed. I'm awake. Well, my brain is. My body's not. <laughs> so. All right. So I am going to turn the camera to the cutting area and just start cutting. So let's take you guys this way, this way, this way. That should be plenty of room. Turn the camera. Look at that. There's my curtains. Turn it around. And I'm gonna look through this screen instead, right here, so you guys can watch me chop up some fabric. Let's center it some. There we go. Now you can see the whole table. So here it is. It is a fat quarter bundle. And I'm not sure the line. Let's see if there's a selvage on here. It is Contempo is Thankful by Amanda Murphy for Benertex Fabrics. So I need to press all these darn it i should have like done all that in the beginning but again this is just improv so i will hold all these down so that you can see them first like so and then i'm going to plug the iron in so that i can press turning it on move some stuff On my ironing board okay and here's the next one as soon as the iron is ready then i'll go over and i'll just take you guys with while i press these for now you can just see where they were a gift from um creative notions hi tammy hi kim i am improv making something a quilt top obviously tonight i'm going with quilt top I totally wanted to load the long arm with something else, but unfortunately, I don't feel like um, doing that because I don't have a thread color to match the next quilt that I want to do anyway. So for now, I'm going to make something new and different with eight fat quarters because that's all that I have here. So those are all that. Let's go over to the ironing board. Let's take you over to the ironing area, right here. So I can press them. So I'm just going to press them. That's what I'm going to do. And all I need to do is press the fat cores. I don't really need to press um, the background fabric I usually just cut that directly off the bolt because that's easier I'm hoping this oh that's wiggling way too much guys we're gonna swap iron down camera up why because I can hope that's good there we go we don't need much pressing they weren't like super folded I do use lots of steam. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm going to go take these and stack them nicely on the cutting area because I think I'm going to cut them all at the same exact time. I don't think I'm going to do any. Ooh, this is so wonky. I don't like when they're wonky. I'm going to stretch it out real quick. That's what I do when the fat quarters are super wonky. And then I'm going to do this. See? Oh man, that is so wonky crooked. Okay. So I'm repressing it again after stretching my wonkiness. I'm going to go lay it on the cutting board and then iron another. I'm just going to try to lay these all and flat on top of each other nicely. Obviously, you can't see because I'm over here at the cutting board. This one's going to have a little bit of waste. Next. They're all kind of wonky. But I always press back quarters. It's the only ones I do press. I don't really press any other pre-cuts. All right, so I'm just going to stack them all on top of each other over here on the table where you can't see. Let's see who else we got here. We got Cindy here. Um, okay. So this is a very fall line for sure. Pumpkins and leaves. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of these are so wonky. Next. It's only 1015 British Columbia, Canada. Hi, Aunt B. It's 1118 here. And for those that are new watching my channel, the Insomniac series is specifically after 10 p.m. Arizona time, and it's always random. I do not come on, on any specific days, so it's just random. I try to come on when my husband falls asleep because he can fall asleep while I'm sewing. You know, I try not to start sewing after he's already fallen asleep because he's a light sleeper. That's what happens when you're in the military. He sleeps light, and I don't want to wake him if I start sewing once he's already asleep. But he's awake still, so not for very much longer, but at least I can start something. I'm literally stacking all eight of these because I can cut through this many layers. It doesn't bother me. Probably going to have to add some more water to my eye. Okay, one, two more. I always like flatten them out as much as I can first because the ironing board is still warm from the 
previous piece. How many of you here, and then obviously those that watch later, actually like the process of my start to finish quilting? My, you know, when I make it all the way to showing you pretty much the whole process of something. You guys enjoy watching the whole process, even if it ends up being more than one video. I'm going to take you guys in a second back over. Let's put some water in here for when I do come back to any kind of pressing, which it won't be for a while, but that's okay. It'll be pretty ready for me to use. Okay. Let's go back over to the cutting area. Make sure that you guys can see the cutting area in full. Look at that. Awesome. All right. So what I'm going to do is line all these up to where they're past a line so that I can make a nice straight cut. Everything's past it. Everything's past that line. I always make sure everything's past a line. And I do my best to make sure that all the salvages are going to get cut at once as well. Everything's nice and straight. I'm going to grab out my big blur. And I'm going to cut all of these nice and straight with each other. And let's hope that my blade is still sharp enough for this. That's one very non-sharp blade. Okay, nice straight line. Sure, why not? Now what to make? Let's see. Let's see who else is here. La -da 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 -da. Mm -mm -mm. Hi, Linda. Okay. I love my new iron kin. It's awesome. I'm not getting stuck on the cord, which is pretty darn cool. That's that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Your pin mill blocks done today. Now tomorrow's borders. You guys love when I do the whole thing. Okay, awesome. Now let's see, do you all know why my bobbin feels good on the bottom, but not the top so well? I think you need to adjust your, is it from your machine? Um, I don't know how to fix it on a machine, but on uh, my bobbin winder, there's an adjuster to make it evenly go from you know the top to the bottom. There's an evening screw, but I don't think machines have that. I am just making something random. No idea what I am making. Top is skip. You'll just have to use your fingers. Sometimes I use my finger to level it out. So I just use my finger to push it up and down so that the bobbin winds up and down equally. I had that a problem on my old brother, but there was no changing. I so wish I could sew at night. I always feel guilty if I wake the hubby. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start with, let's see. Is that five inches? I'm gonna start with a five inch strip. 
five inch strip. Let's see, and this is 18 inches, so I can get five. Let's see, I'll just start with a five inch to start because that sounds like a good number. No, five and a half is a better number. Let's go with five and a half. That would be this one. I like numbers, kind of helps with the seams because then it makes it five inches when I'm done. Let's do five and a half. Okay, so my first cut of all eight pieces is five and a half. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep those together perfectly like that. I'm not going to disrupt them. My second kit. I think I'm going to do three inches. Let's turn my ruler around. One, two, three. Okay. not going to disrupt that. My next one is also going to be three because two threes equal five once I miss that take that seam away. And then it's lined up, lined up, lined up. Uh, my my blade isn't very sharp, guys. That's why it looks like I'm struggling. And then I should have. Let's see, I should have enough to get another five and a half, honestly, since I'm improv quilting. Um. Yeah, let's do five and a half, and then whatever's left on this, I can just throw in my strips. Doesn't look like much. So yeah, I'll just do that as five and a half. Hi, Dewana. Let's see. Make it as you go. Yes, this is a make it up as I go improv project because that's what I like to do. So it started with um, five and a half, three, three, five and a half. That's what I did. And now to um, so I could have just done two five and a half and two three and a half. So this I just throw in my strings because I don't need it. All right, since this is all improv, I'm going to start by sliding all this out of the way nice and carefully. I'm going to start with this piece over here. I'm going to cut the salvage off and then do do. Ugh. Hi, Zoe. Hi there, Zoe from, or is it Zoe? Uh, sometimes you never know, but I've seen Zoe's just Z-O-E before. I'm burning Australia and recently channel, and I am a huge fan. I really enjoy your relaxed style. It's a refreshing change. <laughs> yep, I'm a little bit, it's because I just like, I don't know. I just like being, having free will when making something. All right, let me cut this salvage off. Toss those away because I don't use my salvages. I don't know who does, but I don't. And I'm going to subcut into three inch for these. So they'll be three by five. 
think I'm on to something. <laughs> so there's three inches and you guys never see me cut this way. This is very rare for me to use the um, mat as my um, the cutting mat, but This is what I'm doing. Okay. Do, do, do. Hold on. I'm going to do something real quick. Kim, I'm going to make you a, um, a uh, moderator since I don't have any on right now. Okay. Just in case, because it is nighttime. And I will probably get some creeps after hours. You never know. And I don't always catch them. All right. So these are five and a half by three inch. I know that's an odd number, very odd number. But I don't know what I'm making and I'm just guessing as I go. Because that's what I do when I'm making stuff up. And I actually prefer this way of piecing when I just make things up. I'm not sure how to delete someone. It'll you just hold it on hold on the thing when it comes up. So here I'll show you real quick. So we're not gonna do Cindy, but I'm just gonna hold the name like this. You just hold on it and it'll give you a bunch user timeout hide so on and so forth you'll have different options but it'll tell you, you can press remove or delete or whatever okay all right i can get two more from this looks like that's actually a really good amount oops trying to keep it nice and steady tippy nice and steady I don't usually cut this way. I usually cut a different way, but. And one more. I'm just going to slide this over <laughs> onto a line because I'm running out of room with the camera right there. All right. So I'm literally utilizing almost this whole entire amount of fabric. All the way up. To the top to the tippy tippy top and i don't save these either those will just go in my bucket my bucket of don't use all right so again five and a half by three inch the only reason why i'm telling you guys this over and over is because of the fact that if you want to make it if it turns out really awesome all right i gotta put my things under my door before my husband i think tv off It's all nice and blocked off now. All right, now I'm going to do this next stack. These are three inches, so what I'm going to do is subcut them into three inch squares. Again, I'm just going to do the same exact thing, and actually, I think I'll cut both piles at the same time, make this go faster. Because I'm all about quick, 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 get it done. Okay, I'll cut the selvage off first. <clears throat> There's an advantage to cutting like this. Your fabric does not shift. All right, so I'm on three inch subcut, so I'll have three inch squares. And I'm just gonna toss them out of the way every time I cut them, get it done faster. because I'm going to be mixing everything up anyway, I think. Pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. Hi, Delilah. Yes, this is definitely a mystery quilt. I don't even know what it's going to look like. You don't even know what it's going to look like. But it will be awesome. 
usually I draw something out, at least sort of. I draw sort of something out. <laughs> so these are, again, are three inch strips subcut into three inch squares. One more cut. Let's see if I can make it with the camera in the way. Right there, right there. I'm literally using it all up. Good numbers, Tiffany, good numbers. <laughs> all right, so again, there's my junk. Don't need it. Now, let's keep these. Let's see, I won't be able to do that because I won't get enough pieces. Never mind. Let's just subcut these also, and I'll just have two stacks, a five and a half inch stack and a three inch square stack. Okay, so let's cut the salvages off. Do this one more time. Oh, that cat didn't grab. And again, this fabric line is Contemplos Thankful by Amanda Murphy for um, for Benertex fabrics. It was a gift to me. <clears throat> Three inch. Three inch. Keep having to tell myself over and over. <laughs> I never cut this way on the board. I usually use my ruler as my numbers on the ruler instead of the cutting mat. But hey, let's see how much more accurate it is to cut with the cutting board than it is to use the ruler only. I still have to cut some background fabric too. All right, one more. I'm gonna have to scoot over. Line it up on the line. I cut three inches. Wow, I really did good on that number. Okay, ta -da. So I have some five and a half inches, and then I have my three by three. So this is five and a half by three, and three inch by three inch. Now I'm going to toss those out of the way, and I am going to subcut some background fabric. So there was eight per. So what I'm gonna do is just unroll this like so into a fat quarter's worth. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> Cutting a fat quarter's worth. Two actually. Okay. I'm going to cut them at the same exact time. So, what I'm going to do is just cut right here, real quick, off the bolt. Oops, I missed totally. I really don't care if that's crooked, guys, because I'm just going to be cutting anyway. Slide that out of the way. Turn it around. Now I'm going to make those same cuts again. I'm going to line this up, making sure I get all the edges, and I'm going to make those same cuts. So this would be 
the equivalent of one, two, three, four fat quarters, and I need to do um, the equivalent of eight. So I need to do that to another time. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I just need another yard. Okay. Improv, improv, pithy improv. I just need to cut another yard. And yes, sometimes I do waste tons of fabric. Not really tons, but sometimes I do waste enough. And this was all wrinkly, so I'll put this away for later. Maybe for borders. Throw it out of the way. For those that are joining, I am improv quilting, improv piecing. Well, same thing. Fold it all in half, line it all up. I'm going to make all those same cuts. Put it on a line. Make sure everything is crossing that line. Right there, right there. Everything is crossing that line. Everything's nice and straight, nice and flush. Cutting eight layers. I don't really waste it. No wonder it's sliding. I have the ruler upside down. <laughs> All right. My blade is going dull. That's why you guys see me cutting like this, but I don't feel like changing it. All right, we're going to start with five and a half. We're going to do two five and a halfs and two three inch. This time I'm using the ruler on my cuts. And I'm not looking at the comments because I'm trying to do good cuts real quick. Turn this around. I'm going to do three inch. One, two, three. One, two, three. Line it all the way up. Perfect, perfect. Oh yeah, I have plenty, plenty, plenty. I just like rough estimated when I cut all this up, so off the bolt. Stay, stay. Nice, nice. Kind of veered at the end. Oops. Okay. So this I can just put aside and see, look, plenty of I can make a two and a half inch strip out of this one and whatever out of that. Not wasting anything really. Don't need that ruler no more. Now for sub cutting. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to face this way. Except for the fact that these selvages were not lined up because I didn't press anything. Let me grab my tablet and I'll look at some comments while I line all these up. And I feel a sneeze coming. <sighs> Did I say hi to Delilah? Uh, no, I don't remember actually. Hi, Bree. 
Uh, came in a bit late. Is this a mystery? Yes, this is 100% all mystery. <laughs> this is what I call improv piecing and designing all in one because I'm making it up as I go, which is what I tend to do quite often, but usually I draw myself a picture. This time I did not draw myself a picture. I just pulled out a fat quarter and said, and some yardage and said, okay, it's time for something. I'm going to do both of these at the same exact time. Just lining up the salvages. That way I have some left at the end and it'll be a fold and I can just press it out and use it for scrap piecing in my wonderful scrap pile. They never come lined up when you buy it on the bolt. Actually, no no pieces, not even jelly roll strips come lined up the same. Okay. So I'm going to line these up on a line. Let's put them on a two. Cut all the salvages at the same exact time. Everything's lined up. And I think I'm just going to do because they're all being subcut to three, so I can do them all actually at the same exact time. Every single one of them with the big ruler. I just thought about that right now. I like to have fun with my quilting. And I'm telling you guys all the numbers just in case whatever I do end up with comes out really awesome. And you guys want to make it. So that's why I'm giving all the numbers. Although these are quite easy. It's five and a half inch pieces for five and a half inch strips subcut to five inch or three inch um, rectangles. And then the three inch strips subcut into three inch squares. So it works out perfect. Oops, that's the next file. I'll probably put one too far and it won't cut right if I have more than I had three, and there was number four. That's why it was laying funny. And there's number four. Okay. It's all lined up. Lined up. Lined up. Lined up. Use the big ruler and cut. It is a 60 millimeter, but it's going dull. I need to put another um, blade in it. I'm not going to do it right now, though. I'm not in the mood. I will just work with what I have until it's completely and utterly dull. Okay, so now I'm going to subcut these also into three inch strips or you know three inch segments for both sets. Okay, so I have three inch squares and three inch by five and a half inch pieces. And I'm just going to subcut the same as I did with the last fat quarters. So in, in reality, I'm using 16 fat quarters. So I should get a pretty good size lap quilt out of all this, hopefully. We will see, because I am not sure. So you can see my stack growing. Or at least I think you can see my stack growing over there. How many of you improv 
quilts. Make just whatever you can make with what you got. Come on, stay down. I didn't press these, so the folds are kind of funky. And I'll get two more cuts, just the same as the last time. So I'd better be a little bit more careful because it's now at the fold. Linda does it a lot. If anyone wonders, Robbie and I are best friends and sewing buddies. I kind of knew that, but then I don't think everyone else did. Okay, so I'm going to come over three inches now this way with the ruler because now I'm at this crease of the fold and I really, really want it to be nice. So I'm just going to fold it out of the way. Hold it down and cut. Probably not very safe to do it this way. <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying. Actually, let me just use another ruler to hold it down at the same time. That might help. Right there. Let's take that off. Because I can save these, see? That's like one and a half inches. So I just saved those. Alright, so I'm going to take and hold that over like that. There we go. Ta-da! Why does that not look three inches? That one did not come out three inches. I have one mess up piece because it sat weird. That's okay. I can cut one piece out of my extra fabric so that I have equal pieces. So it needs to be five and a half by three. So obviously it's going to have to be cut totally different than the rest because, yeah, but I only need one. So let's make a straight line like this. Watch what I do here. So I'm going to come over five and a half. <laughs> this is how I do this. So... One, two, three, four, five and a half. I think I'd know without counting by. So that's five and a half. Now I'll straighten up this end right here, and then I'm just going to cut three inches off after I cut this first one straight. Ah, oh, screw it. We'll do it right here on this end. Nice and straight. That way I have equal pieces. Turn it around. And now cut three inches. One, two, three. There we go. On that line. Put that there. Put that on the ground. There's my five and a half by three. Yep. Okay. Ta-da. Everything's cut. Now to sew. Go this way, guys. Here's my five and a half by threes, my three inch by three inch, and then my others. Again, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but this is what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with sewing three each and every single one of these. I'm going to chain piece to each and every single one of these. Oh, let me tip it up a little. I don't like it when you guys can't see me. You can see me and sewing. There we go. Perfect. All right. Making a quilt to be donated to a nonprofit for auction to raise funds. What is the tag put 
my name on it or what name on it, even if it's a donated quilt for charities or auctions or anything. I don't see no reason not to. Somebody's going to want to know who made it someday, right? Okay, turning my radio on. Oops. As long as you guys can't hear it. All right, so I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam. I'm going to check something real quick because I'm probably going to mess this all up. Five and a half. Exactly five and a half. That's what I wanted. So I'm going to sew all these together like this. Every single one of these is going to go to one of these. And I didn't even do any math. Hmm. Cut. So I'm going to chain piece all these through. And I'm not going to pay attention. I'm just going to start chain piecing one to another. And it's good that the white is white because with the white, I don't have to wonder which way is right side up or not. It's not going to matter. Just going to sew them on. All right. Now that I'm on to, on to the sewing, what are you guys all up to? I've really got dust flying in my nose, like always. This is going to be fun. It's going to be probably a typical looking quilt. Because my... I'm just making stuff, but... I would also add city and state future owners would like to know where it was made exactly. City and state will work too. Just put created by blah, blah, blah in the city of blah, 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 or created by blah, blah, blah. And write city and state for whatever the whatever the auction is called maybe like the fundraiser whatever the fundraiser is called so say it was a fundraiser for children's love and hope and wonders or something then put that on it too i think i think that would be cool Kim is laying in bed relaxing. Duana's watching Hallmark. Like Hallmark Channel? Like on TV? Robbie's in bed relaxing also. Hi, Anne. In bed resting. Did my allergic med last night and wiped out today, but sewing tomorrow. Well, I'm sewing today, and in a minute, it will be tomorrow. <laughs> it means I'll, be, I'll have been sewing for two days straight. If you want to get technical. <coughs> oh, this is, this is like, I don't know, relaxing. Just over and over and over sewing the same thing. <laughs> I don't know why. To me it is at least. Mm 
Okay, come on. I wish I didn't have to like put them together like this. Like they just magically appeared together and then I just already have them done because I can't put them together as fast as I'm sewing because I have to sew two handed. Like I have to guide the fabric through. <laughs> Or else I could use both hands. Like if it was the automatic, not a shift or anything, and I could trust that it wouldn't, I would let one hand go. chain piecing really faster yes if you're not sitting here talking to everybody in the world then yes <laughs> you're actually just going over and over again yes and definitely saves on thread like very much saves on thread I brought a cold water in here and I already had a water in here. Over and over, I sew. One piece after another. Yes, definitely eliminates the need for, I don't have really use starter remember. And I have to say something about that. Starters and enders for a straight stitch machine, I don't see being necessary. Why? Because nothing gets sucked down into the hole when you start. That's the reason for starters and enders in the first place is to prevent this next piece from getting sucked down in the hole. Now, like on my brother machine or any other machine that has needles that go back and forth, it has an elongated hole, you know, like, like this, you know, it's elongated, not just a little pinhole. It's an elongated hole. So the needle can move back and forth. Those machines definitely especially like castor triangles. I, I have lots of issues with it sucking in half square triangles, but this machine, I, I don't even, I can't even recall a time that it ever got stuck down in. I've had thread tangles on takeoff, but nothing else. It never got stuck down in the hole. On my brother machine, it's got stuck down in the hole. And especially with half square triangles. So Deborah. Hi Deborah. If I am pulling fabric from my stash to start your huge dresden, it's going to be bright batiks on black and my mind it's gorgeous i can't wait to see it complete awesome i'm gonna have to um when i get a chance to show you guys the numbers to make that um dresden plate so big like that actually i could probably just take a second and show you guys right now Okay, so here's how this works. Here's the big, huge Dresden, right? Mine's a bunch of pieces of paper taped together. So you need to start with a four and a half inch piece of paper, square, okay? Or tons of paper, I should say. 
taped together to create four and a half wide, long, long, long. And it needs to be 25 inches tall, okay? Remember that, 25 inches tall. Okay, and then what you do is you fold that piece of paper in half, right? Find your center. From your center, when you get your half mark made, from that center, you're gonna mark out a half an inch on both sides, creating the one inch start, okay? So remember, once it's folded in half, you have created your center, okay? So it's a half an inch this way and half an inch this way, creating one inch at the bottom, okay? And then start, make a mark with, with a pencil on both sides so that you have your one inch at the bottom. Then from that mark, cut from that mark to the top corner of your four and a half inch. That creates a nine. Okay, so you would cut that with a ruler. I'm just gonna use this one for an example. I don't have a big enough ruler. I used two rulers when I made this. So you would start your ruler at the bottom, okay? Like so, and then you would align the top of the ruler towards the top of your thing and then cut it at your angle. So you would line from your mark to the top from a four and a half inch strip. So for further, if you guys wanna make it, and you can keep it out of paper if you want, or you can make it out of the template stuff that I did, but I didn't have enough pieces, so I taped my template paper together as well. Or not paper, but my template stock stuff. Which is this. So after I had made this piece out of paper, I just took and taped my template paper together, you know? And then I just laid it on there and cut it out exactly the same. See? And it's 25 inches tall. Okay? So fold your four and a half inch piece of paper in half, find your center, measure out half an inch from both sides of that center so that you have a one inch bottom, 25 inches tall, four and a half at the top, and from that half inch out to that top corner, you'll make your cut all the way to that tip top corner. And that's how you make the large dresden. So, oh, can't pick it up. So let me turn the camera back to me. Hopefully that helps anybody that wants to do that in the future. And it's 44 blades. Yes, 44 blades. At first, I thought it was only going to be 40 blades. But when I started putting it together, I don't know if my brain didn't see the seam allowances or whatever when I, you know, cut it out of paper, but it ended up with 44 blades and I would recount them, but I don't even know where the Dresden top is right now. <laughs> it's buried. Um, so yeah, it's 44 blades. So I'm pretty sure if, if you remind me later, I'll, I'll find it and count them. That way I can um, tell you exactly how many, but I'm pretty sure it was 44. You might have to refer to the video though. I think it's in one of these insomniac videos. That means you have to watch my videos to find what video had the Dresden in it. <laughs> I'm sure it's like episode three or four or something, or I don't know. I'm at episode 26 today, so. You guys can't hear my music, right? Just making sure. I need to like put something in here with headphone, well, at least one headphone so that I can hear it better. I'm going to make a template and try it. Yeah, it's, it's quite simple actually. actually designed a pattern 
for the template that I made. So sooner or later when I can sit and do it again, because I haven't even finished the first Dresden, um, then I can make the pattern that I designed. But since now I have to have 44 blades because I designed it for 40 blades, not knowing, um, I need to change the amount of yardage used to make it the pattern. So I'm gonna have to adjust everything. And I do it all by math because I don't have an app to, I, I think there's an app or a computer program that helps give you numbers to, you know, for pattern designing. I don't have that and I don't have the money for it. So someday, but not now. For now, I just design whatever I want. Oh, and this project so far, now that we're um, with numbers in my brain, so that I can remember for future reference as well, um, is eight fat quarters and two yards of fabric because that makes eight fat quarters. And that's just so far. I still have like a yard and a quarter left for borders for when I'm done and it'll just be white, but, and then I can find if I have a fall print somewhere that has like, I don't know what on it, but I'll find a border to go after that to make it even bigger. I don't want to think about that yet. Cause I don't even know how I'm going to be laying these out, but I'm sewing them all together. And the fun part after sewing them together, I need to um, sew more together. And I also need to press it all, but I don't think I'm going to press it. All. I think I'm going to finger press the next step. After I sew all these together. Because I do like to finger press a lot and I don't like to pin and I'm pretty, uh, I don't know what the word is, but I'm pretty lazy when it comes to all those steps. <laughs> I don't want to do them. I don't find it necessary. My stuff comes out perfectly flat and if it doesn't, I starch the crap out of it before I put it on the long arm. Speaking of long arm, when I get a chance, I'll show you guys the quilt that I finished because I know my mom does not watch these videos. So, and if she did, I'd be super surprised. I'll show you the quilt that I finished on the long arm from ep last episode 25's um, long arming. I only showed you guys quilting two rows, but um, I did finish it all off camera. And uh, yeah, I will show you guys the finished quilt. It's not finished finished. It does need a binding and um, a tag. I think I'm not even gonna add a tag. I think I'm just gonna write on it with a marker. I'll just write on the back with a marker. It's for my mom. It's not like it's gonna matter. It's just a sampler quilt. She knows I made it. It has her very first block in it. The before her video, that was her very first block, but she did she did need to make sure that this machine was not gonna take off on her when she realized it was super fast. <laughs> she hadn't been behind a sewing machine in a very long time, so Oh, 
And if I bust out in song and my voice sounds horrible, it's just because I've had bronchitis. And ever since the bronchitis, my voice has changed considerably. Like, it's pretty darn, uh, pretty darn strange sounding, especially when I sing. Like, normally I can sing, but not when I'm sick and congested. Okay, has she been sewing anything since, like, kind of thing? Uh, not that I'm aware of. She pulled out her sewing machine. She made herself a little sewing area. And hopefully soon I hear the words, oh, I made something, you know? She has more than one sewing machine. She has lots of fabric that she was going to give to me until she came to my house and realized I quilting is not that hard <laughs> or at least the piecing part i think she was scared of the piecing part honestly so now that she knows that it's not hard and i mean she started off with a um snail trail as her first block so i'm pretty sure she could get anything else if she you know can do a snail trail she can do anything and then she just watched my videos. If she if she'd watched my videos, then she would know how to make a lot of stuff. Sorry, I missed the start. I just woke up. Hi, little B cross. It's okay. It's just me. Random making something don't know how it's going to turn out there's no pattern i'm improv quilt top making which is usually the best for me i have so much fun with improv top making like so much fun It almost sounded like that was a little too loud, so I turned my radio down just a little bit. It's an old-fashioned radio, so when I move, the signal gets either loud or quiet. <laughs> so the wire for the antenna is hooked to the bottom of the desk where there's a, a metal um, thing. <laughs> so that I can even pick anything up, you know? All right, so this is how I'm going to do this, I think. Let's pull this guy down. Hi, Carla. Hi, Vicki. All right, let me move that this way, and I'm just going to toss them down here. So here is my cutting gizmo that I got from a subscriber slash my best friend, Michelle, who hasn't been on in a while. She hasn't been too well. She has MS just like me, but she also has a couple other problems, just like me, but different ones, and uh, she hasn't been well lately, so. I totally did not count how many pieces there are. Okay, so I'm going to make something totally weird, I think, with these. I think it should should match up, but we'll see. Because I'm not um, not perfect with this, but we're going to try something. And I don't know how it's going to work, but we'll make sure that it somehow works. Because no matter what I do, it should turn out it'll be awkward or elongated but that's okay i'm still gonna make it 
because there's an equal amount of pieces, I think, from both stacks. And if not, I'll have leftovers or something. I don't know. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to take one of these, the matching one, and then one of these. And I'm going to create a weird piece that's like this. No, I don't want to do that. Maybe I do want to do that. Hold on. Let's see something real quick. Let's mess with this for a second right here. Let's press this to the dark. If I just did something like this, big one next to littler one. Hmm. I kind of like it, but then that's just like everything else. And I'm not trying to make something like everything else. For each one of these, there's one of these. Right? Yeah. Should be. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do because I'm, I'm different. I'm weird. We're going to be silly about it. So I'm going to find this right here. And I'm going to chain piece the match to this. And then I'm going to go back through and chain piece the white on the opposite side. And then we're going to see what happens here. I'm not even going to bother pressing. So I'm gonna, this should be the same exact size now. They should equal same size because I'm being creative here so first I'm going to make one real quick and then I'll make another one and we'll see how it looks okay so I want to press that towards no I don't want to press it that way I want to press it just towards the white it doesn't really matter everything else is pressed towards the dark so I'm creating this real quick let me put another one together let me bring that closer to me I'm going to see something here I think it does matter what side that's on though I'm going to sew this on first. They should match completely up. It's probably something someone else has already did. No, I doubt it because I'm being creative. You know, put this on the other side. It should be exactly the same. Press it out. And then take the two and put them opposite I don't know that's too much white next to each other no yes hmm I'm seriously thinking here I kind of like it, but I I think it needs something else. So what I'm going to do one inch strips of a sub color. That's what I'm going to do. One inch sub color, and then I can just rotate the long blocks. That will look cool. So I'm going to grab a third color and I actually have one in mind. So I'm going to leave these right here. I have this color. Great sub color. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to cut one inch strips. We're going to put some something together real quick. So let me just turn you guys this way real quick so I can cut a one inch strip off of this so we can see remember this is just doing whatever we're going to see what one looks like to start and then we'll go from there.
kit. So I don't know how much yardage of this I'm going to use at the moment. I'm just going to cut my first one inch strip. Only one inch because I don't want it to be too big. Because I don't want it to be too big. Okay. I'm going to leave that right here. I'm just going to push it out of the way. Turn you guys back around for a second. Just like this. We're going to take this one inch strip. I'm going to put it on this side first. I'm not even pressing. All right, and now I'm going to trim it to size just to see, which is, let's see how big this actually is. It comes out to eight inches the um, piece. So I would be sub cutting eight inch strips off of here. I'm going to finger press this towards that way. And then I'm going to add this one on the opposite way. And it should be exactly the same. I sure love just doing whatever. And having fun with it. So here's that. I think that looks cool. Good night, Robbie. All right, let's make another one and see. I'm going to sub cut another eight inch piece because I know it needs to be eight inches. So I'm just going to lay this on here. Line this up up there, line this up on the eight, cut. I know that's not very accurate, but that's as accurate as I'm going to do for right this very moment. Okay, so I'm going to take this blue guy, press it to the dark with my finger, just find this blue guy. Here's the blue guy that matches. Hold on, I gotta remember how I did that last one because I want them all to be sewn on the same side. If they're not, then they're not gonna come out right. All right, so color on the top. Lined up. Sew it. Press it back. Put one of these on the opposite side. Press that back. Let's make one more. So let's use this guy. Put that on top. Put this match on. Add the white on the other side. I know it seems kind of weird that I'm adding so much white, but I'm pretty sure it'll all work out. Press that back. Now take the two and opposite them with my wonderful little one inch strip. Line that up. I sure like being creative. It's probably going to look really weird, but I don't care. <laughs> All right, finger press this back. Oops. And this will go on this opposite side. Stay where I had to. Press 
press this towards the middle because it'll lay better that way. So there's another one. Now I'm going to turn the iron on. I'm going to make four of these and then put them together somehow. I don't know how yet, but I will figure it out. So here's two. Let's make two more. Let's cut two more eight inch strips from this. It's not even pressed, but I'm just going to cut it anyway. Oh my goodness. Stay tippy. Right there. So there's one. I don't even know how much fabric I have of this, but. Okay, I should be working, guys. The YouTube crashed. I had to get it restarted, but it lets me restart from where I was. Can you see it now? Should be back on. Should be back on. <laughs> you guys just have to refresh your screens. My YouTube crashed. <laughs> I can't help it when that happens, guys. So, but I realized it as soon as I saw the screen. Okay. So, you guys might find me back on. You might not find me back on. We'll see. I'm just going to keep sewing while I was waiting for the... Let's see if it works when I don't have any other screen on. Let's see. Not working here. Just refresh your screen. Pull it down out of the way. Press X and then restart. It should come back up. It's working for some and not for others, but it says I'm working and live here. So it's even counting down and I'm sorry for that. I'm going to keep sewing just, you know, nobody else is using internet in my house. It's YouTube itself that's messing up. Aha! See, both those are working. All right, so now I'm going to sew these two together. this. So we'll put this on first. And I'm going to see what I have created. I might have created something really dumb. Never know. <laughs> okay. So now this goes on this side. If I do it enough times, I should remember. All right, guys, you're out of sync, though. Unfortunately, I can't help that. Huh. I don't know how to fix those kind of things from the cell phone. <clears throat> All right, another one done. Now I'm going to turn, oops, not that far. I'm just going to turn you guys this way. I'm going to press. Okay, so now I have four pieces. We're going to take these over here. Move this completely out of the way. I'm going to move all this on the floor with my stack of where I throw everything when I'm working. And put that there. And now I'm going to take this and that. I need to separate those too, I think. With No, no, yeah, they need to be separated. I don't know, or not. I could just connect them all. 
exactly the same with this opposites in rows. No, 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 no. Like that. And just put rows connected with this color. But I don't know if I'm going to have enough of that to go in between them all. I don't know. I could build around them. I could take it all apart. I didn't realize I didn't turn the camera down. This whole entire time, guys. Sorry. So I'm not sure. I think I kind of want to just take it all apart and do what I was originally wanting when I thought about it the first time. Yeah, that's what I should do. Try something different. That, that time that I was messing with the pieces. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these out. I don't like it. I think it looks stupid. I'll keep messing with things until they are accurate. <laughs> the way I like them. So let me press those out so that I can rip them apart. Make it easier. I like having the seams pressed back to normal. So rip this out. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And all I did was waste one inch of fabric. You know, so since I only wasted one inch, it's okay. You guys might like it, but I don't like it. And I'm not going to keep going if I don't like something. Because then I'll end up in a pile of never finish. Alright. Let's bring it over and rip all these out. So you guys can sit and hang out while I rip. And I can read comments, I guess, while I rip. So, how many of you have disliked it as much as me so far? <laughs> oh, it's crazy. I really disliked that. That was kind of stupid. I don't know what I was thinking. But all these pieces are reusable. That's ripped apart. Let's rip this part. Now that I know the seam ripping trick, it goes so much quicker. <laughs> Instead of picking each one, you know? Oh my goodness. Seriously? I have no idea what's wrong with the screen, guys. To me, it looks all messed up. What the heck is going on tonight? I don't know. For me, it's, um, I don't even know how to show you guys because you can't see the screen. It's messed up. No, I wasn't happy with it. Not stupid. You just weren't happy with it. Well, yeah, same thing. It looks kind of weird. I don't know. I don't want to put together weird. I want to put together awesome or traditional looking, I guess. If it's not awesome, then it's traditional looking. Oh my goodness, come apart.
Okay, this is, seems to be taking longer now because I'm trying too hard. Okay, that's out and apart. <clears throat> yeah, I, ca I can't show you guys my screen. It's, it's uh, what is that word? Um, when something is uh, the lack of color and it's film-like, I should take a screenshot. <laughs> It looks weird. Could be that my phone is dying too. I have it on the charger, but it's only at 20%. So, all right, that one's done. You see how easy that ripped? <laughs> I tried to show you guys this the other night and I kept ripping the fabric. Not the other night, you know, the last time I was in here working on something. It only seems to work when I'm not trying to show you how it works. Okay, that one's out. I'm not only just ripping these out though, guys. I'm actually going to rip the sides off of the four patches too. Off of, I mean, off of the two patches. Why did I just say four? I don't know, but. Substitute sunglasses. So what's everybody doing? <laughs> I don't like looking at myself this way. When I look at the screen, I, I it looks funny. It really, really, really sucks that I can't show you. I don't want to rip my fabric if this isn't going to rip properly. Um, are you leaning towards flying geese? No, I'm leaning towards something else, I guess. If, if I can get these ripped fast enough, then I can get to what I think I want to do. I sewed all those other pieces together, though, so that's a start. All right, one more of these, and then I got to rip all the sides. Hates a relationship with the same river. I have a cooperate, please, relationship with it because I don't use it much. And surprisingly, um, now that I know this trick, it's been so much easier to seam rip. Let me tell you, way, way easier. Sometimes it does not want to cooperate because you got to hold it just right for it to work right so that you don't rip the fabric. All right, now that I got those, now it's time to, did you lose me again? You shouldn't have, it's still counting for me. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna press all these so that I can get the, um, so the seam easier. I'm re-flatten the pieces. I'm just refolding them back and pressing them so that they're flat again. And then I'll rip those. That way I don't have to press them after. They're already pressed. Nice and flat again.
That's a lot of ripping. Usually I don't do this much ripping, especially during a live stream. For now, though, what I'm going to do is sew everything else, and then I'll rip these off off camera, you know? So for now, I'll just get these situated, and I'll start doing what I wanted to do, I think, when I was thinking about it during the sewing the second time before I went to add pieces. But I'm going to rip all this up. Okay. So I'm just going to lay these over here, turn you guys back around, and I'm going to sew some more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead now, take those over here and put those over there. I am just going to kind of press these back, and I'm going to sew these together in four patches like this. Turn it down just a little. So I'm gonna make some four patches and I will seam rip more later. So I'm just gonna throw that over there. My screen is still messed up. So I'm just gonna nest these and make four patches and I'll do some ripping in a little bit. So I'm just going to take two different ones and sew two different ones together over and over. Hi, Cheryl. Who all do we have here? If you're here, say hi so that I know you're here. If you can, say hi, because it says I have 31 people watching. Should have just pressed these with the iron. Probably would have made this go faster. I went on it. The grub too. Okay, and we have Kim, Cindy, and Bree, Little B Cross. Let me press these real quick, and I'm gonna just take you guys over. I'm gonna press all these, to make it easier. I'm like brain farting. I never brain fart. This is the weirdest thing. And we have Joe, Deborah, Vicki, Linda. Hi guys. Who else do we got? I'm gonna turn this way. Let's just come over here and hang out. Okay. So let me press these two first. So I'm just making four patches. I guess this is going to be an easy, simple quilt, unfortunately. Not unfortunately, it'll be still cute either way. Alright, so now I'm just going to go and press all these to the dark. Hi, Carla, Judy. Did they say Deborah yet? Deborah. Okay, so I'm just going to lay these down. Roll them back. Lay them down and roll them back. That way my sewing is faster. Should have just done this in the first place. Then I wouldn't have had to rip any fabric. Hi, Marlene. I'm just going to put these all correct direction to make it easier. Sewing side up. While I wait for the iron to warm back up on its pedestal. I am covered in so much thread. <laughs> Don't you guys just love that? Go out in public and you're like totally covered in thread. How do you know someone's a quilter? They're covered in thread. <laughs> my screen is still in that weird thing, my cell phone. It's weird that I can't show you. Yeah, I'm 
Let's do one more and then put it back on base. Stack some more. Making another one. I was lurking. <laughs> it's okay. I know the middle of the night is harder for people to to chat because most people just turn it on on a TV in their room or something. I don't have YouTube on my TV in my room, so I use my tablet or my phone. I'm trying to put these all stitched side up, so that way all I have to do is grab and press, grab and press. It makes it easier. So much easier. Alright. Now all I do is roll the iron back over and over and over. That would be too much finger pressing for me right now if I was to just sit there and finger press all this. When I first started quilting, I used to have my son, every time I ironed, I'd have my son come out and I would have him um, press, I mean, help, you know, I would just keep pressing over and over and over like this and I'd have him pick up everything that I just pressed. It was nice to have with help. Now he won't help me. He's bigger now, so he doesn't do anything like that. lasting off the base for quite some time though in between which is a good thing thank you guys all for the thumbs up and the reminders for thumbs ups Thumb thumbs ups I mean that's kind of retarded saying to me <laughs> Thumbs ups. Don't forget your thumbs ups. <laughs> and don't forget if you're new to subscribe down that way. And then for any of you curious about any of the links for all the social media, we have a um, group on Facebook. And my Facebook group is in the description below. You just click on the link. It should take you right to the group. Just answer a couple questions um, to join. It's not hard. They're simple questions. Seriously. <laughs> simple questions. And then join the group and the fun. And then I'm also on Instagram. I have a quilt for sale page. It's a page where I sell my quilts, which haven't been posted in a while, but it's at least the idea is there. And then um, I also have direct mail. So if you want to mail like a postcard to me, because I love postcards, then you can check that out. And then there's all sorts of useful information. My Etsy shop, which I don't even use anymore, is in the description as well. And yeah. And whatever else I have down in there, I'm not sure because I haven't looked at it in a while. Oh, if you guys want to tip me, um, I know I don't ask for money, but if you wanted to tip me, that is also in the link below. I just use a GoFundMe account um, because I don't know any other way to get tips. Um, and I've heard so many horror stories about using the super chat. I mean, you can use the super chat, but I'm not going to see that money for a very long time because I haven't made nothing um, on YouTube yet. So, and I have to get to a hundred dollars to even cash it out. Crap, keep forgetting to send you a postcard I got on my cruise last September. Well, send it on out. I love postcards. I don't know why I do. I just do. I think it's really nice to see where everybody has been and that you were thinking of me when you've been there. Even if it's just a postcard from your state. You know? I think that would be cool. I'm a postcard lover. Yes, and share. And you know, you don't even have to share um, 
like you think. You can just share to someone's messenger to let them know that I'm on. So if you have another quilter friend, you can share the link, the share link. For those that don't know how this works, up in the top screen right here, you hit the video and you just press share like that. And then it'll pop up with copy link, send in a message and more. And I don't know how my iPad works, but you can send it this way on my other thing. It's different, but you can share it on anything. You could also save videos. So if you remember that you like something in this video, you just press this little um, add to playlist button and it'll add the, to the playlist. And then I always add these. The Insomniac Quilting Series has its own playlist in my videos. And then you could also uh, stream it to a different TV or device and other things. So getting a facial with a stream. It's me from hell on Cayman Island in the Bahamas. Oh, awesome. I still have to unpick those other pieces. My goodness. But what I unpick, I will just sew those exact ones together on the side that the stitch line is already on, where I've already stitched. And those ones can just go together, make it easier. All right, not very many more to go. I'm wondering why my chat is not. Come on. quiet here tonight. Maybe everybody is watching from a TV and can't type. I'm not trying to be quiet. I'm chit-chatting as much as I possibly can. I'm trying to think of things to say. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Anything? It doesn't even have to be quilting related. I'm a very... I'm a very open person. I mean, I'm not going to talk about my uh, bathroom habits or anything like that, but anything you want to know. If you think I know something, ask. Maybe I know. You know? You never know. I just said no like a bazillion times, didn't I? <laughs> it's the middle of the night. I'm going to finger press these back while this is still warm. And that way, all I have to do is press them real quickly. And the last part should go so quick. Hi, Sharon. What are you making with those squares? Well, I, so far, am making nothing. It's just an improv quilt. I thought I liked something, and I guess I didn't, so I picked it out. And I was trying. And, yeah, so now I'm starting... Kind of over, but not really. I'm re-changing my thing up, making four patches. So let me take everything back now. That's sewing area. Although that color did look good. I might have to add some sashing. All right, let's go back over here now. I'm gonna check my power. Boy, yo, yo, it's getting lower, guys. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna last. And while I don't know how long it's going to last, I'm actually going to pick these out real quick. 
wherever my seam ripper went. There it is. I've had a glass, gotta take my baby out, have fun, y'all. Okay, see you, Cindy. Oh, I'll turn it a little bit more this way. I like being able to look at the camera when I talk to you guys. It makes it easier for me. Although my screen is kind of messed up right now, and I can't really look at myself on the screen. It looks really weird. It's like a all the um like a black and white with uh all my tattoos and everything is all highlighted like a negative it's a negative it's on negative screen somehow it's weird very weird and i don't know how to get it to go away it happened when i restarted the video or resumed the video Come on. There we go. Seems like I'm going to be picking forever. It doesn't want to seem to pick around where seams connect. That's the problem here. I'm trying not to stretch or distort the fabric more than it already has been. I also learned from Teresa Louise watching her video that supposedly this end is for pulling those threads out, but that doesn't work here in my situation. Okay. So that. I have it on the charger. It still dies when it's on the charger. Live feed takes a lot of, that's why I use the used to use the computer and it worked a lot better, but I do also make long live feeds, so that's why it's like um, eating my battery power. That's the only thing about live streaming, is it does suck up a lot of power on the phone, even while it's on the charger. All right, that there. Figured I'd pluck these now so that I can sew the four patches together. I think I'm still going to do something when I connect all these together because I think it will look cute if I add another splash of a different background color. Ow. That goes up here, that goes down there. Hi, Patricia. Trying to do this same ripping thing and get it done quick, but nothing's ever fast. Like I said, you guys can ask me questions if you want. The other thing about seam ripping this way is I've been poking myself every time. Running it right into my hand. If I come towards myself, well, it's not going any faster. That goes that side, this goes this side. <clears throat> what time do you get up? I'm a night owl too. I usually don't get up till noon or later. I'm up usually, okay, during the week, sometimes 8 8 30 in the morning. 
Um, I don't go to bed till five, six in the morning. And then I get up at around eight, eight thirty. And then between one and five, anywhere between, not exact, I don't sleep this long, but between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m., I lay down and take a nap. It, sometimes it's, you know, three to four that I take a quick nap, sometimes not, but I don't sleep much. So I've never been much of a sleeper, but that's because I have insomnia, severe insomnia. My sleep-wake cycle is messed up, so I can sleep during the day better than I can at night. Um, yeah, I don't know how to explain that, but I don't really get much sleep. I sleep three to four hours a day, but it's split up, though, because I can't sleep very long at once. But I have had days where I've slept four hours at one time, you know, and sometimes six hours. It just depends on what drug and I don't mean like drug drugs, I mean like pills, um, what pill combination allowed me to sleep and or if I had my pistachios or a um, med medical marijuana um, edibles also helped me sleep, but I can't afford them. So it's very rare that I can get them to help with my sleeping, but I have tried them and it has helped. So. I've slept longer on those than anything else, but again, can't afford it, so it's something that I can only get when we can afford it, or if someone gives it to me or brings it to me. But the pistachio thing works, because it's got lots of melatonin naturally built into the pistachio, so, ow, that went right into my hand, I keep stabbing myself. I am seam ripping right now. I'm usually up around 9 or 10. Yeah, I'm up pretty early. Sometimes, though, if I didn't go to sleep till really, really, really late, like 7 a.m., then I don't get up till 11 a.m. It just depends. Depends on when I go to sleep. But I'm usually up quite often, quite late. Okay, so I can't seam rip this way. It doesn't allow me to go that way. It wants me to go this way, into my hand, every time. And to think, I have three more to rip. You just go my other way. It's the same. You just split it, rip it, split it, rip it. <laughs> I really don't have to do this while you guys are on camera, but... I don't know what, I, I, I might change my mind about sewing this again. So for now, I'm just going to seam rip while I think and talk to you guys. Oh my golly, how do you function? Wow, what they charge for medical marijuana? I thought if you got it was free. No, not free. Um, medical marijuana, you still have to, uh, you pay for the, um, the license to get it in whatever state that you're in, which is $300. And then the medical marijuana, depending on what you get and how much you get, um, uh, like, let's just say a 10, okay, 10 pretzel sticks that are like this long dipped in chocolate, 10 pretzel sticks is $10. Okay. And they're like four or no, two milligram each, I think. So it's very expensive. <laughs> it's a dollar a pretzel. And they're just long stick pretzels, but they're no bigger than what I just held up. They're no bigger than that. And, you know, regular size pretzel like that big. So, yeah, it's very expensive. And if you buy the smokable stuff, which I don't like, I don't like the smell, I don't like the taste, I don't like any of it, then um, it goes up even higher in price. So edibles are cheaper than buying the, the smokable type stuff, but still very expensive but the gummies were like 22 something um the last time we got gummies and yeah it's just expensive and you only get 10 gummies and they have a little bit more um thc in them per milli you know milligrams or whatever thc milligrams in them but still too expensive way too expensive and you can make things if you buy the actual um, marijuana, you can make your own edibles. That's what a lot of people do, but I can't, I can't afford it either way. So, 
but it does help. It's hard to have something that helps and I can't even afford it, you know. It would be nice if it was free like a regular prescription and someday it probably will be like a regular prescription, but right now it's not. This is starting to go just a little bit faster. Expensive. Even C yes, CBD oils are even more expensive. We bought this little itty bitty container. Um, take about half the size of this container. So chop that in half, only that half of it right there. Okay. Container size. It's about this this height. Half that container for $45 for a CBD oil. It smells amazing, but it didn't do crap. Like literally didn't. My arthritis cream that's prescribed to me does more than the CBD oils did. So yeah, no more with that stuff. Scott, it didn't even do nothing for Scott and Scott's really sensitive to medications. You know, he, he'll, you give him, a, um, I'm just going to use morphine as an example. You give him like one, one little pill or even half of a 15 milligram pill and he'll be out the rest of the day. He doesn't take medicine. So even Tylenol puts him to sleep, you know, if he was to take a, a sleep aid or Benadryl, even like when you give Benadryl to kids, he's out like a light, you know, he doesn't take pills. So it affects him a lot differently, but yeah, it, the CBD shit, they do nothing for him at all. He was like, I can't believe we just spent $40 on this, you know, kind of horrible. But, yeah. All right, this is my last piece to take apart. All that. It's awful. Does your insurance pay if you have medical marijuana? No. You answered my question. Yes. <laughs> a friend here uses it and pays $65 for a two-ounce bottle but says it's worth it to her. I mean, it affects some people differently. I just have, um, I guess I have a higher tolerance because I've been on medications all my life for stuff like that to work for me or do anything for me. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I don't, I only do it if I can afford it or only get it if I can afford it, but you know what I'm saying. All right, finally, everything's ripped. I'm just going to go ahead now and put that on there. I poked myself enough times. I'm going to sew all these now that I've just ripped together into four patches and see how much I can get done in the next however long. All right, let's put that one with that one. Put this one with this one. Put this one with this one. And this one with this one. All right, let's start running these through. It's a good thing they're all pressed. They are kind of messed up you know you can see they're kind of shredded a little that's because there's threads everywhere I really don't care because most of that comes off in the cleaning up putting it together process and I'm sewing on the same line that I was on previously so <clears throat> my youngest daughter had medical marijuana she was on chemo in Illinois it was pill form and worked great second time it was the smoking kind and it wasn't as good. Yeah, I guess the ingestion ways are different too. I've never tried the um, actual THC creams though. They are even way more expensive. They have oils with THC in them and they are way more expensive, those creams made with it than it is for even the edibles. It's kind of crazy how the different, because of the different strains that are used or something. I don't, I don't know all that technical stuff. I just know that edibles do help me sleep and they help me sleep long periods, not just any sleep, longer periods of sleep. All right, now I'm just going to start putting all these together now, as long as there's two different ones. Except I don't know if I want two, no, nah, I'm just going to do it anyway. I was going to say, I don't know if I want two of the same kind of orangey ones in the same, but I can't prevent that. Because there's not, there's only eight different colors to start with, so. 
And I don't pin, I just hold my seam. For those that are new and wondering. All right, now I can start zooming maybe. Sorry, my phone is vibrating. I always forget to turn that off every time I put the video on. I don't know why I forget. It's the weirdest thing. A lot are growing their own. Yeah. If it's legal in the state that you live in, you can grow it yourself. I don't, I think it's some states like California, maybe. I, I don't think you can have more than like two plants or something like that. I'm in Arizona though, so it's not fully legal here. You have to have a medical marijuana card for it. Now, CBD oil, on the other hand, which is made from a different kind of plant, which is still a marijuana plant, um, but a different part of it or different strain of it or something like that, that um, doesn't require a license in most states. It's anything with, oops, why did I do that? Anything with THC is what requires the license. I already snipped, so I might as well just snip them all since I cut the thread on the machine. <clears throat> this has become a very long episode so far. It's I can't tell because of the whole black and white screen thing, negative or whatever. It's two hours and 14 minutes, it looks like. Oy. I'll probably have to get off soon. You guys know I'm making four patches. I try not to get, let most videos get more than two hours. I mean, two hours tops as long as anyone wants to watch a video. They only just, according to my... Uh, stuff like my YouTube stuff. Most videos that are long, like two hours, I think people are fast forwarding through them because uh, it says time watched for most of the videos. Like, say the video was two hours. Then it, next to it, it'll say um, like a, a number, like the views of the video, and then it'll say how much time is the average watch time of that specific video. And most of my videos, the average watch time is like 35 minutes of a two hour long video. So a lot of you scroll through, you know. I mean, it's not that bad, honestly, because a lot of it is the same talk over and over sometimes, but you don't want to miss something. You gotta watch it all. But I don't like to get them too long because then it's hard to watch a, a replay when they're too long. Unless you're turning it on on a TV and just watching it. I just watch from my, my tablet and I like sew or something and listen to the people chat when um, it's long ones, when it's replayed long ones. I don't watch my own videos. Only to remember something that I've said or did is why I would watch my own video. In the middle of the night, though, time can get past me. Okay, girl, take care. See you next time. Good night, everyone. Okay, good night, Sharon. I can't school down the street. I'm here. You can't, what, what's wrong with having a school down the street, Vicki? I have a school down the street for me. Can't believe I'm just making four patches. Of all the, the work, and all I'm making is four patches? I should have thought about this in more detail before I went live. <laughs> I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? It's only 1.30 in the morning. 
do need to back a quilt. Oh man, I just realized there is a fabric that I have that would have looked great with all this. But I decided to use it as the back of a quilt. I think I only need five yards for the back of the quilt, but let's see. Ooh, this would have looked cool. Look at that. That would have looked really nice. You see that? It would have looked really nice. But I decided to use it on the back of another quilt. Don't you hate when that happens? Isn't that maybe I can use it for the border or something and then just use something else for my quilt backing? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this turns out. If anything, I could just leave it as it is when it does get to whatever happens of this. I'm thinking I'm just going to sew these together and then I'm going to sew the others together. The, um, these pieces together and then just every other block, I guess. I think that'll be fine. Put a white border and then maybe put a small border of that other print that looks good with it. I was hoping to be able to be done with this in one night too. That's what I get for messing up. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have done what I did in the first place and I could have went straight to this. And I would have had a finished quilt in one night. Because I work pretty darn quick normally. When I'm not lollygagging and picking. But I'm having fun though. Even though I don't have a smile on my face, I'm having fun. <laughs> oh, you're talking about being down the street from the school, I think, with the medical marijuana. Or growing it or something, because you can have it whether you live next to a school or not. I think it's the growing it part. And then I think they're grown, most people are growing inside or in like grow houses or whatever. Is it called a grow house? I don't fucking know. I wouldn't even know how to cultivate it or I don't even know the word. I wouldn't know how to do anything with it. I wouldn't know where to start to make anything. I'd be lost. Having fun is important. Yes, very important. You notice I have lots of fun when it comes to these projects. And even if it comes out like poo, I'm still having fun. I think it's going to end up looking more additional fault anyway. Which is okay with me.
Is anybody sewing while I'm sewing? Any of you sewing? I mean, there's 32 of you here. Whoa, that's awesome. 32 people who can't sew hanging out with me. I really enjoy that. I wonder if my thingy froze again because there is no fresh comments unless everybody fell asleep on me. <laughs> I'll probably stop this in just a few minutes because it'll hit the... Um... Oh yeah, it did stop. Look at that. Okay, and we got yep at 19 thumbs up. Mine shows 29. Actually, let's see what this one shows. Yeah, 29. Mine shows 29 thumbs up. Just listening. Hi, Christine. Just finished moving. And what do I see? Tiffany's on. Yay. I'm going to be getting off soon. I've been on for two hours and 24 minutes. So two hours and 30 minutes, I'm going to get off. Because I think that's long enough. So let's see if I can finish at least these four patches being sewn in that amount of time. Plus, I haven't ran out of bobbin yet. So that's a sign that it's time to get off because I have not pre-rolled any bobbins. <laughs> I'm kind of behind on my pre-rolled bobbins. I need to pre-roll some again. I've been rolling as I go the last couple days. Anytime I do any kind of sewing in here. What are you doing with these? I am just making a random improv project. The first try looked stupid, so I took those parts apart, those pieces apart. Now I am making four patches instead <laughs> because my lock looked dumb. But I will get these all sewn. I'm going to start pairing them up real quick. And bam, let's sew all these together. Look at that. And then I can press it all another time because I'm not in the mood now. I mean, I am in the mood, but I'm not going to finish off camera. I'm going to do it all on camera. And most of the pro most of the projects I start in Insomniac series, I finish in Insomniac series. There are been a few times now, just a couple that I actually worked on it on a so Sunday because I felt myself being behind and I needed extra days to work on the project. But most of you have seen all my videos anyway, so you know if I'm what I'm working on, whether it's a night video or a day video. Um, Tamara is doing a two inch square scrap quilt. Awesome. That'll be cool. You just like sewing a bunch of two inch squares together that's what we call postage stamp when they're two inches or smaller over and over just sewing them all together all right let's rip these and i got a few more minutes <clears throat> not rip you know <clears throat> break them apart And then I can uh, have a mess going on in my sewing room trying to use up leftover blocks of various sizes. That's awesome, Marlene. Christine says, okay, bummer for me. It's nice to see you. I haven't caught you for a couple weeks. I'm busy lady sometimes. <laughs> well, 
I'll be on on Sunday and probably tomorrow night too, or today in the middle of the night later, later, because I need to get this done. I still have a video that I need to make today. I tried making a video the other day and I realized that I cannot, <clears throat> I cannot record it myself. I need somebody to hold the camera for me. So I had to wait till CJ was not in school, you know, for a weekend to be able to record the video because I can't move the camera on my own and do stuff at the same time. My, I'm only one, I can't do things one-handed sewing related, so. I have to have CJ hold it. I'm gonna sew um, all these pieces real quick together. The ones that I ripped out. I'm just gonna sew them together real quick on the sides that I ripped. That way these are finished. No matter which way I sewed these, um, they should come out five and a half by five and a half. So, yeah. They're just very stringy. That's all. Super very stringy. hit my two hours and 30 minutes mark but give me a second to finish <laughs> sewing these now because i figured i'd do this and then i'll read did you guys see what just happened here it pulled it up and started sewing <laughs> that's what happens when there's tons of thread everywhere it gets caught up in that little foot thing and pulls it right back around All right, those are now done. I'll keep these separated. I will press them another time. Now they are done. I think what I'm going to do, while you guys are still here, let me just open a few of these so that I can put it right here. What I'm going to do is take these and my four patches Swap it like this, put a four patch on this side, and swap that like that. No, like this. No, like this. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. That looks better than the last time. Let me change this out for this. Ooh, I like it. How about I sew this together real quick and then I show you guys. I think this looks kind of cool. I don't know how the next block is going to meet with it though. It would meet with it. I would have to rotate it and it would be on the top. You see that would look stupid. Never mind. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Like that? No. Bah. I don't know. Screw it. I know you guys can see right here. What's that gadget called? This thingy? This is called the cutting gizmo by the gypsyquilter.com, which is on this side. It's even got a non slip face so it's supposed to stay but <laughs> all right so i think i'm going to do something with these i don't know i guess no matter how i make it it'll look cool it'll be different all right let me see each makes their own rules and pot seven houses from school that's k through k through 12. That's awesome. Small sizes. Do you finish your swap pieces? Yes, all they are they're all done. And I just need to finish writing my name on them all. So all my swaps are K 
pieces are done. I even fixed my boo boo. I made 54 total because I made four extra just in case. And uh, one of them got a boo boo. So I had to take apart the boo boo, cut the block, put the boo boo back, you know, put new pieces in, then put the block back together. So I at least fixed my boo-boo. So now they're all perfect and I just need to finish writing my name on like 30 of them. Actually more like 26 maybe. So yeah, they're ready to go. I just need to finish writing and then I'll send them off. Chris. Okay guys, so it's been two hours and 33 minutes now. So I'm gonna get off of here. I will probably resume this tomorrow night. Um, if not, then just know that I will resume it sooner or later because it'll be in the Insomniac series and you guys will see it. So I'll probably press everything though off camera. Um, all that needs to be pressed, but I'll still come back and sew these to these on camera. So, or not. It just depends. Whatever I do, you guys will see what I end up doing anyway. All right. So good night, everyone. I thank all 36 of you for joining in the middle of the night when we cannot sleep. And it's only 1.45 in the morning here. So I guess I can go watch TV quietly and hang out in my room and do nothing. <laughs> Maybe eat a snack. Mm, I don't know. All right, guys. Get some sleep. If you're new to my channel, though. Head down there, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, get notifications when I'm live, like, share, you know the dr drill. And any Insomniac Quilting Series video is always after 10 p.m. Other than that, stay tuned for So Sunday, which is around 5 p.m. Arizona time.